Anders and Krista, we had some exciting news about the concept of the American Song Contest. First off, what's your personal connections to the United States of America? Ooh, well, I studied there when I was young, so I lived in New York for two years. Uh, that's my connection. Uh, I've been there several times. Um, I had a production company that had uh, partners over there, and uh, yeah, I, I really love the United States. And this is a very bold move, of course. There's been others that have tried coming from Europe with a contest idea to make it. Notably, Simon Cowell, he tried the X Factor format, which was at the time the biggest music format in the UK. Went to the US, lasted three seasons. So, why do you feel that this will be your your vision for what this can be will be successful? Because we love it and we're good at it. Uh, no, really, uh, I think that uh, when you combine the best expertise in an area uh, from Europe or from, in this case, Sweden, uh, say Max Martin, and you add a really good American artist. It becomes magic and that's what our vision is to combine the best TV makers in America together with us and we will create magic that's our vision I also think that I mean Eurovision is a truly unique format in many ways I mean but I think one of the big success factors of Eurovision is that it has the local factor you get to cheer for your own country it's like uh, it's like soccer or football as I say uh, if you I mean if I will always cheer for the for uh, the team from my hometown, and Eurovision has that you can even if you don't like the song, you will still cheer for your country, and that's that's what sports thrive on, and entertainment shows in the U.S. so far doesn't have that, and this is sort of it's like the sports event for people who don't even like sports. Yeah, it is, yeah. and and if you look at college football in in the states, for example. Uh, people are so patriotic uh, with their own state and also you could add in the state you have two options it's from your own home state but you can also cheer for the school where you studied so you have actually two states usually that you can root for so we believe uh, that's something to build on and you mentioned before that the concept or one of the concept is it could be by states or maybe not but it's going to be contained within uh, the nation of the United States. Uh, to me, it kind of sounds like Melody Festival and almost in the sense that you have artists from different parts of the country, but uh, in a similar Eurovision style format. And you also mentioned you wanted this to not be a one week event, but something that's quite a long process. I think, yeah, but there is a big difference with Melody, to Melody Festival, which is that it's connect you you in Melody Festival, and yes, it's a tour, but it's not like every artist would come from a specific city or region or something like that. It just happens that the actual TV show is different. So you don't get the local factor. You don't get to cheer for your hometown or your home state or your home region or whatever. And I think that's it's, it's sounds like a small difference, but I think it makes a huge difference to the way you get involved in the show. But still, you have a point because uh, a benefit for us is that we not only have the Eurovision Song Content format, we also have the Melody Festival format. To, in our minds. To, yeah. In our minds, that we can pick the cherries from. So, uh, of course, we look at that possibility as well. And I know you briefly mentioned in the press conference, there was a question about Eurovision Asia. It was announced uh, a few years ago with a lot of gusto and everyone thought it would happen within a year. Uh, this one you've projected a 2021-2022 launch date, mm -hmm. but a lot of fans might feel a bit uh, maybe let down that Eurovision Asia hasn't happened yet. So what will make this different? What will make this actually become something and not just a, a press conference? Yeah, well, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, we believe that we have the tools to make it happen. Uh, we believe we are the right people. We believe we have the right background to do it and the right experience and the right connections. So, uh, without saying anything about the people who try to do Asia, but we, we just feel that we have what we need. And also, it. we don't have the challenge of trying to find broadcasters in several countries at the same time. 
Yeah. We're working within one country within instead one country, of... Within one country, yeah, it's a lot easier. Yeah. And you briefly mentioned the synergy of Max Martin and American writers and singers. Do you see this as a gateway for allowing European writers to also maybe mix with American writers and vice versa, American writers coming to the Eurovision Song Contest? Absolutely. And final question. Uh, of course, a lot of people in Europe that have followed Eurovision for many years and even from outside have some type of a loyalty towards the idea of Eurovision being Eurocentric. Uh, and this is also from fans outside of Europe too. Mm -hmm. So how do you think uh, Europe, EBU or Eurovision, the brand, will benefit from the American Song Contest? Can I answer another question first? Because yeah. it's like you mentioned the fans and I think that's one of the crucial facts of the Eurovision success, that's the fans, because they are the best fans in the world. And in order to make this succeed in the United States, we will need the help of the European fans, or yes. the fans of Eurovision. Absolutely. And I can't really say how, but I, I think we can solemnly promise that we will make it easy for the European fans to come over and help us, because we will need the European fans to show the Americans what this is yeah and we teach need, them we need yeah. them to teach them and to be our ambassadors yeah we need them up front by the stage yes thank you very much thank you so much You're wishing you the best of luck and 2021 2022 we'll see what the american song contest